Hi, it's me, Ingrid INFP. And I had kind of a difficult experience at work today. Um, it was basically, I'm going to try to be, you know, pretty simplistic about it. Uh, it was a man who had um, apparently paranoid psychosis where he uh, um, had uh, people at the gym that were um, not nice to him, like they didn't say hello, and uh, he felt um, like not not good going to the gym. He he's somebody who loves going to the gym, so uh, that that made him feel pretty lousy, and then he. Uh, went to a job interview where these um, guys who are at the gym um, are part of that company because it was like a gym that's quite close to this company that he applied for a job at those place at that place and the um, like the job interview asked him questions about if he uh, liked to um, go to the gym and the, the questions were really weird and so he felt like there must be some kind of rumor going around because the town that he lives in is quite small it's even smaller than where I live in now and he he thought that maybe uh, the reason why everybody is like that um, like cold towards him, including the, these people at the job interview, is because um, he always has a lot of energy and they think that he is like taking steroids or something like that, um, or on drugs or something. So it, it made him really sad and anxious, so he was sent to the emergencies. The, the psychiatric emergencies and he got medication but then he changes gyms and things are much better but um, I don't know if it's much better because of the medication and I was like I believe him I believe that this is what happened I don't I don't think that this is just a feeling that he has I think that it is easy to be bullied by people and that rumors can start spreading. Um, now, that must might just be my view of the world. And the reason for that is because I myself have been bullied at work. And I explained to this in one of my early videos, um, and this was two years ago, um, that I was bullied while I was at the at medical, um, the internal medicine clinic. And it, it made me feel insane because nobody believed me and everybody thought that I was being like uh, paranoid and but there were things like there were things that were going on that uh, clearly showed that there was um, rumors that were going behind my back and Thing is, because I was a medical intern, um, a point is to have uh, like people talking behind your back, uh, like all the senior doctors are there to judge your performance. So I mean, like that sort of thing is expected, but like it seemed like everybody was warning each other for working with me. So I would meet a new senior doctor or a medical resident and they would have a bad idea of me before even having worked with me and i i've learned through several sources different um interns medical interns one of the medical interns um uh basically he worked the morning after that i work night i worked night shift uh with a senior doctor and then the senior doctor um, told this medical intern 
oh, the intern from last night was like waking me up several times during the night. Um, like, I hope that like, you know, you, you don't take from her example. And like, this, like uh, he, he said, oh, uh, Ingrid was working with me last night and it was, it was terrible. I was like, okay. Um, but like, I didn't know about all this until the medical intern told me a few weeks later that that had happened. Once I told uh, him that I was having all these rumors spread about me. And he was like, yeah, um, that happened. And he didn't even know me at the time. So he didn't know who this Ingrid was. He had seen me around, but he didn't know who I was. So somehow the senior doctor was telling the next medical intern that I was, I was shit, basically. And then also another medical intern said that she'd overheard a uh, um, senior doctor uh, talking about me or, or talking about um, one of the interns, a female intern. I mean, there were only like four to choose from for, for that, um, that semester. Um, that uh, was a uh, working night with him and that um, this senior doctor was saying, oh, well, I've only worked night with her once, so I don't know what to say. And then I realized, that, well, who else has only worked with this doctor once during a night shift? That was me. And this girl was just like blurting it out to everybody in the in the room where she was like, it's weird that they talk about us. And then she was like, I wonder who that could be. And then I was like, uh, I think that that's me. And she was like, no, it can't be you. You're just like, you, you, you do a great job. So why, why would they talk about you? Well, they were talking about me. And so explaining this makes me sound like a crazy person because it's just like hearsay and very subtle things which keep you a terrible gut feeling that is inexplainable and i don't know it's kind of like this isn't comparable at all but it's kind of the feeling that you get about reporting sexual harassment like how how do you even there's no proof you're just there with an experience of something that happened was kind of not not okay but it wasn't like you were raped i mean you were doing things that you weren't really wanting to do but you never said no and that kind of thing same thing here where it's like you you know that there's a rumor going around but nobody's going to tell you about the rumor, right? Um, and like, should you tell it to your boss? I told my boss about this and he was like, yeah, no, I mean, uh, it's kind of their job to, uh, to judge what uh, you guys are doing. I was like, yeah, but not to talk behind my back. And he was like, they're not talking behind your back. They're not uh, biased against you. And I was like, <laughs> kind of feels like it. And he was like, is there any way I can help? And I don't know. I don't know how, how the boss could help. Um, so I said, no. Uh, maybe he could have instead, like, given me options of, like, what he had the power to do. Uh, but I didn't want to cause more trouble. Because I just wanted to get through, I wanted to, to pass so badly, you know, and I'm at the mercy of these senior doctors signing my, my presence sheet, you know, so I didn't know what to do. And, and of course I was feeling like I couldn't trust myself. I couldn't trust other people. I couldn't trust the people, my colleagues. 
I couldn't trust even even the medical interns because they uh, were were spreading this shit. Maybe I don't know. Uh, and apparently, even the nurses um, could have been in on it. I don't know. Um, and it ends up that um, one of the 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 senior doctor, the boss who's in charge of uh, the emergencies at that place, uh, wanted to call me in for a private meeting, and I was like, okay, you know, I don't know what you wanted to talk about, uh, and I thought, and she was like, you know, like your um, your supervisor. I, because you had a supervisor. I had a supervisor who was a senior, senior, like, um, professor in uh, lung medicine or something like that. So he was rarely at the emergencies. He was basically only working with the lungs all day. But he was really nice. And, like, I would have uh, regular meetups with him and, and talk about how things were going. But this... <laughs> This doctor said, oh, but, you know, he, he's not really that close to you guys at uh, the internal, like, you medical interns, because he's, well, he's a senior person who barely is at the emergencies. Uh, so he said, well, she said, well, maybe I could do my, um, some, uh, uh, a, a meeting instead. And I was like, Okay. But then I, I thought to myself, oh god, this is either really good or really bad. And it was really bad. Basically, she... I thought that this was going to be like, you know, 10-15 minutes just like check in on me. It ended up being in her office for 45 minutes and she grilled me like it was a, a job interview. And she was saying, oh, obviously there are certain cases that you should be able to deal with on your own without ever calling uh, calling somebody else, um, calling a senior doctor. But I had been taught that we were always supposed to call a more senior doctor. And, and it's better to ask too much than too little. But she... She wanted me to, to say w w what cases I would be able to manage on my own and how I would manage it. And I, I said that there are certain things, but I said that I am, you know, and, and she, she wanted to know everything about me. She wanted to know about my upbringing, you know, like my, my parents, like where I come from, because... Uh, she, because I, I didn't talk much, so she thought that it was because I uh, was American that I uh, didn't talk much. And she, and she said, if there's anything that you have questions about or if you need help with anything, uh, Please come to me and don't come to your supervisor because I am closer to you guys. I was like, yeah, yeah. And then I was like, I'm never going to talk to this person ever again. Um, she was... It was so bad. So terrible. And I'm scarred to this day. Like... She made me feel like I'm such a piece of shit. And I mean, of course, with her standards, of course I'm shit, you know? But it's like I was a medical intern. I wasn't supposed to know everything. And that, that other senior doctor, the one who said that I called him several times during the night, well, that's his job is to answer calls about things during the night. Like, I was just doing the best I could and was trying to learn, but obviously they weren't, didn't care about me learning. They just cared about me taking as many patients as possible. 
and yeah i don't know it, it made me question like can, can i even practice medicine what am i doing um am i going insane um and there was one um it was by it was approximately by easter like so it's at this time of year i always feel kind of bad like i got burnt out last year and the year before that this happened um basically i i was looking for an apartment and things were not going well and i was night shift with this terrible psychopath okay I don't know any other person that I would call a psychopath, but this guy was a psychopath. Like, he was so charming and so great with, like, the patients and the senior doctors, and everybody thought that he was the best. And then he was so callous, like, he had zero feelings underneath all that. Like, it would literally be like, eh. and then... Like, as soon as he turned his face from the patient, you know? And I worked with him a night shift. And something bad happened because... Um, uh, well, basically, it was a, an administrative issue that uh, went kind of wrong. Uh, because somebody else didn't give me the proper information. Uh... And then I was, and so uh, he, he, he told me off for that. And then I was sitting there in the middle of the night and I, uh, I was crying. Like I couldn't deal. I just broke down crying because I didn't have a place to live and stuff like that. And then he came and asked like, what's going on? And I just said, yeah, I'm like going to be homeless in a month and and uh, I'm really tired. <laughs> and he offered zero empathy. He was like, okay. And then he just left. And uh, he, I think that he was one of those people who was going around telling shit about me to other people and there were several people telling shit about me and it's like you know you start feeling like what is this terrible conspiracy I've become the part of like what is how can I get out of this I couldn't get out of this because this was my job I I had to do this so yeah and so that's what i call like bullying at the workplace because that's kind of how it is and so th this guy was that i was talking about this patient he was not uh, bullied at the workplace but it was kind of like the job interview and was bullying you know it was kind of like adults saying lies about people um, and that happens to some of my patients as well there was a patient of mine who uh, uh, her boss was told that uh, she uh, that my patient had been taking drugs and it was like untrue and it was because she had uh, gone home with a friend and the friend was drunk. She had driven him back home. Uh, but this friend apparently, th this other friend, somebody else, had um, seen them together and said that she looked tipsy um, on the week weeknight. And, and the boss believed her. And then she had to go and take a, lot, a bunch of drug tests. Uh, and that was not good for her mental health. So, 
all these like rumors and lies that are spread it's like you think that this would end after like high school you know but no this kind of things continue way into adulthood and thing is like you get less and less believed it seems like as time goes on um people think adults don't have people think that adults aren't bullied people think that only only weak people would get bullied and that's already like you know a whole other story but people don't believe that adults can be bullied um and and adults absolutely do get bullied and it really messes you up because it's like and nobody believes you you don't believe yourself uh because there are so many people who believe in an alternate re reality and you don't know who you are because everybody's identity of idea of you is like totally warped and yeah so in the end i got like the the boss of the internal medicine clinic sent me like she she uh me she gave me a pass but you could tell that she was like not wanting to make me pass because she said that she had heard such uh, shitty things but she wasn't allowed to tell me what the shitty things were when i asked i was like well, what did i do what did i do wrong oh you she she said something about oh you don't take initiative it's like okay is that is that such a bad thing that i deserve all of this shit talk you know um and then i came to psychiatry my placement in psychiatry um around two years ago No, not two years. This wasn't two years ago. This was three years ago. I mean, you know, this is, these are things that are deeply affecting me. When was this? 2021. It was 2021. And I'm still affected now in 2024. And so that was the cause of my first burnout in 2022. And then my second burnout, 2023. And now I'm trying not to go out into burnout. But I I wish that I but so when I met that patient I was like reminded suddenly about this whole thing that happened to me. And you know, no matter what I would have done, it wouldn't have helped and it wasn't that i was going crazy it's that other people were doing stuff to me you know and i have a right to feel angry about it um because that really messed up my view of you know healthcare in general about bosses and about colleagues and about people um i i felt terrible and nobody gave me any kind of support so going into psychiatry then at the end of my psychiatry which was three months um the boss um or the supervisor for the um, psychiatry said yeah you know We'd heard a lot of rumors from the internal medicine clinic because they have to give like a report to them. And she said, I don't think that any of that was true. She said, um, we, she said that, that it's true that I am a, a little bit, uh, that I seem like uh, scared to like, um, and believe in myself. Um, but that I have been able to um, make uh, wise decisions 
that I have uh, been able to uh, manage emergency situations, um, that I have uh, been empathetic and uh, a wonderful um, co-worker and a team worker, team player, um, and that um, she uh, wanted me to know that, that, um, that um, I, that she did not believe um, what the medicine that clinic uh, thought of me. Um, and that, that was really, really important that somebody came and acknowledged that, you know, a younger colleague uh, can be going through shit, you know, and that it's not the younger colleague's fault. Um, that I had been a victim kind of of the system and that um, I didn't need to bully myself um, just because other people were bullying me. And so that's, that's the conclusion of uh, that whole story. I think that uh, back when that happened, I did try to make a video on it, but I was still so affected. And by that point, I hadn't heard what this uh, psych psychiatry um, doctor uh, had said. Um, and also, you know, a ton of stuff has happened since then. I've been burnt out twice and and I've uh, started my medical residency and learned a lot of stuff. Um, become way more self-confident in my thoughts and my abilities. Um, but that patient meeting that I had today really uh, pointed out how... Um, important it is that other people believe our uh, stories um, that you know other people see us in the way that uh, we truly are rather than believing what uh, lies uh, are spread through rumors um, and that not everything that is paranoid is psychosis um, because unfortunately we we live in a world where uh, bad things can happen and it's not just um so yeah i i called the senior doctor um, about this patient i had today and it did not feel great because i he told me to prescribe the antipsychotic medicine anyway and see what happens but he did mellow out a little bit when he heard that I was so worried about getting it right with this patient like I didn't tell him the whole story about my experience with this but I said like I'm not I don't know maybe he's telling the truth you know maybe this is actually what happened and uh, he said uh, right okay well well just like try the medication and then we'll uh, uh, see uh, after a few months um, how things are going and maybe he doesn't need to take the medication anymore if he's doing well and and i i think that that was a good um, good compromise um we'll see how it goes uh, but yeah i i i think that this was an important topic to talk about so that's why i um decided to do it before the light starts uh, getting too low. Have a great day, everybody. Bye.